it's a little bit hard to believe when you're still there looking at the place now, but this was Stalag 3. Um, this is the site where the uh, prisoner of war camp was for uh, British and American pilots. Um, and uh, in amongst all these trees, they're all concrete bases from uh, where the huts were, they're all around here. Just over to the left there is a kitchen. And uh, I'll just spin around, sorry about this. And here, the guys in uh, Poland, where we are near Zagan, have marked out where the tunnel that um, the guys managed to escape from, most of them didn't escape for very long, 50 of them were, of the recaptured guys were... Uh, were murdered on uh, Hitler's instruction, his personal instruction. That's where the tunnel ran. There's a little reconstruction at the museum up the road and you can sort of get on one of the trolley things that they would have escaped on. And I just had a go and bottled it because it's, uh, it's not pleasant. It's pretty tight under there. I'll just have a quick wander along. There's the names of the guys who were involved in the escape across the top of it. And they've... Uh, They've popped up a few boards with information on, which is quite nice, and you can come and have a walk around. But apart from that, it's completely undeveloped, really. It's just, I'm sure people are just wandering along here and finding bits of things. In the museum, they've got all kinds of uh, personal effects. They've got uh, little Air Force badges that they made while they were in here. They've got people's documentation, photographs, drawings that people made. And uh, this is perhaps my favourite bit, uh, having seen the film. If you remember Steve McQueen who kept escaping and he was quite naughty, the Germans had to punish him so they popped him in the cooler. Well can you believe it? This is the actual cooler! <laughs> I'm sure Steve McQueen wasn't here, he may have popped along to have a little look. Obviously this isn't the film set, this is the real thing. I'm stood on it. You can actually, uh, there's my feet, look at that. You can actually uh, you could actually have a better cooler and take it home if you want because the whole thing's all breaking up now which is a little bit sad. There you go, I'm so excited. I don't think I'm the only one to be excited about this and to appreciate the connotation with Steve McQueen because Steve McQueen used to sit in here with a baseball and bounce it off the walls in the film and look, someone's brought along, <laughs> they brought along a baseball glove and it's screwed onto the pole there. Oh, that's fabulous. So, anyway, let's come in back and come to the tunnel. Here we go. It's incredible they managed to make this thing. The length of it is unbelievable. It wasn't long enough. Popped out too short of the trees. The trees have grown in now, but you had a good few metres at the time before the trees uh, have popped up. So the, uh, the guard spotted them after only 80 odd guys had got out. You can see that, they put where the fence was. So they didn't actually get very far beyond the fence. They only got over here. These guys crawled along, and this is where they popped out. They used a bit of string off to the tree line to try and uh, tell people when to come out. And there you go. That's when it happened. 24th to 25th of March, 1944. And uh, we're lucky enough to be stood here and to see the thing. Awesome. Absolutely awesome.